Hi, this is CS44, Secure Web Application Development, and I'm Chris Kanish. Today, we're going to be talking about what this whole class is all about. The whole point of this class is to learn how to build web applications. Not only does that mean learning how to write that software, it also means learning how to write that software securely. But also, what's more exciting about this class is really that you're learning how to design and build those applications from zero to fully functioning, profitable web application. So if you are an architect, if you are a CTO, or if you're just somebody who has a great idea and wants to take that idea and turn it into a functioning web app, you need to make a huge number of different decisions about how that application is engineered when it comes to what your budget is, how quickly you're gonna be adding new features, what the privacy needs are, what the security needs are based on your threat model. All sorts of different angles and variables are there. And this class is all about learning how to put those pieces together, make those decisions and build a fantastic web application. So this might be a silly question for people who are already watching this video, but why should you as a computer science student, whether undergraduate or graduate, study the web? Isn't it just for code monkeys writing JavaScript and whatnot? Well, to a certain extent, there are a lot of jobs, there are a lot of people just slinging JavaScript all day. But the web browser as a platform is just the basis for a vast majority of all user-facing software being used in 2023, whether you're using it through a browser or not. It's turned out that the web as a software distribution platform has fundamentally changed how software evolves, how software is measured, how software is deployed, and how software is monetized. So understanding everything about the way that that web platform works underneath the way that your application works is necessary to doing a good job of actually delivering what your users, what you are trying to do as somebody who develops software. So why does this class combine both web security and web development? Well, the amazing thing about running web application software is that as soon as you can put something out there on port 80 and 443, 8 billion people have access to it to pay you money to use that amazing app that you have or to get your word out or to monetize through ads, any number of different goals that you may have. But it also means that 8 billion people out there could poke at that website in a way that you didn't really expect. Just give you a bad day, all sorts of other crazy stuff. So if you put something on the web, you better secure it. This class is all about learning good habits first with respect to security while you are learning how to develop for the web. That being said, this isn't a full web security course. We're gonna have a broad introduction to how the web works, how it doesn't work, how people break it, how you're supposed to fix it. What we're really gonna be focusing on is your awareness of the different classes of attacks and what the current best practices are to make sure that those attacks are difficult or impossible to conduct. This class should focus as a solid foundation either in security or in web development where you can develop further skills on your own as part of your first job or as part of an individual project that you work on in this class and then afterward. So this class is absolutely a full stack development class with two really, really important high level goals. The first one is that you as a programmer need to be able to develop that application securely and effectively and functionally so that your web application works. You're going to learn about JavaScript. You're going to learn about deploying applications. You're going to learn about what runs on the client side and what runs on the server side at the same time as learning how to do all of those things securely. The other really important aspect of full stack web development is what you're going to put in the different layers of your stack. There's an immense amount of complexity that we're going to go into later that goes into even choosing what pieces to put together. And what we're really trying to do in this class is figure out how you understand and talk about the trade-offs between the different design or technology decisions that you have available to you. This is incredibly important in system design interviews and just as you're leveling up within your career, you need to understand not just the code you're writing line by line, but how the individual pieces that are built up of software themselves fit together, what their positives are, what their negatives are, and in what situation you should use what tool. While we are gonna be focusing on how to talk about designing these systems, we're not really gonna go into the DevOps, Kubernetes side of the world and focus on how to do that deployment explicitly. We're gonna talk more about choosing the tools rather than running those tools. The main development you're gonna be doing in this class is in JavaScript that's running either on the server or on the client. So another big thing that this course is not is it's absolutely not a design course in the sense of CSS, making things beautiful, making things super usable, I don't know how to do that very well. I can do a halfway decent job. 
but I still have trouble centering divs. And you don't have to learn how to do that stuff in this class either. You can get 100% on every single thing while making your application as butt ugly as you can possibly think of. You'll of course earn style points for making things stylish, but those are just for bragging rights and I probably won't even talk about them. So to me, one of the most exciting things about this class is the final project. In the final project, which you're gonna get started on very soon, very early on in the semester, you're gonna come up with a idea that you want to implement and it can be almost anything. It doesn't have to make money. It doesn't have to be interesting to anyone besides yourself. It just has to do something that's not a standard kind of database layer that does create, retrieve, update, delete operations on top of some stored data and does it in an interesting way and it does it in a functional way. What I would really like you to do even starting from right now today is start thinking of what's a cool thing that I could deploy to the web that I want to be motivated to work on over the next 15 weeks. This is something that you can put on your GitHub profile. This is something that you can put on your resume. This is something that you'll be able to talk about in every single one of your job interviews. So I highly recommend you know, taking this opportunity and using it to do something as cool as possible. This project can be done in any team from size one, AKA by yourself, all the way up to size four, but teams of size two to three will be incentivized because it's much better for you to be doing this in teams and much better to doing things in a team that's not too big that there's a lot of coordination overhead. So we'll be using these free tier services a lot and they're really, really amazing because if you have a good idea, if you have the skills you learn in this class and you have a few dollars for a domain name, you can start making real money. All you have to really do is find customers that want your idea and have an idea that's good enough that somebody else wants to pay for it. So as you may guess from the last slide, I talk a lot about business models, thinking about software as a service because it has really, really important implications for the way that web applications run and the way that web applications are architected and especially with respect to security and definitely privacy. But this isn't a business course. We're not cross-listed with business. This is not an entrepreneurship course. So I'm not really gonna be thinking about, oh, that could make money. That's a better final project. If you're gonna be an amazing software engineer, you should understand more than just the purely technical side of things. You should understand why the business people are pushing you to do thing one or thing two based on what they understand about how software economics works in the modern day. Another important thing to remember here is that this is a course on secure web application development, but it is not a course on web security. Uh, less than half of the content in this class will be web security explicitly. We're gonna cover a lot of it. We have some very big assignments and you're gonna have to incorporate some idea of security and privacy into your final project, but it's not a full on security course. You should definitely take a look at the other CS courses being offered this semester or whatever semester you're watching this video because there are a lot of amazing faculty who are teaching amazing classes that are not this one that are focused 100% on security. So my next question is kind of like, why should you take this course? And why do I work hard to make this a, a good course? A lot of people have said, oh, you don't wanna make a web course because two weeks later, all the things that you decided to teach somebody are completely irrelevant and we've moved on to the next thing. So as a computer science major, or as somebody who is at that level, you should be watching these videos, you should be taking this class because you want to understand the underlying engineering decisions that have gone into architecting the web the way it has been. We're gonna go a lot into the motivations, the realities, both technical and non-technical that are underneath the way that the web has been built. Like why does React get so much attention? Why are we using virtual machines? Why did Heroku go under? Why was Heroku so popular? All these things, there's a million different ways that we can understand the web as a platform that will be relevant today, but will also be relevant in five years. So you might say, Chris, you say the web is so powerful and so amazing, but how powerful is it right now? So most of this video was created with web technologies running in browsers, running in Electron, which is just a way to run a web application on your local machine. I used a Photoshop replacement for simple image edits. I used the browser to record my slides. I used this amazing slide of tool to create these slides. The slides on the back end are just regular markdown files that get rendered into these awesome slides. And then I can use a presenter mode and a regular mode. All this jazz is right here. It's super awesome. You can see it in class. I'll show you how it works. Everything here was free. Everything is amazing. And everything here is being monetized in some way, shape or form by developers that are making very good money. It's a very exciting place to be in web development right now. 
And there's a lot to learn, but we're going to cover as much as we possibly can in the next 15 weeks. So if you've taken my CS361 course, or if you've taken it at UIC at all, you've probably seen my videos on YouTube. I've been really excited about putting my videos for my classes on YouTube and recording them ahead of time since the pandemic. What's pretty awesome is that more people probably watch these videos on YouTube that are not enrolled at UIC than are enrolled at UIC. So it's, I see it as a really fun thing to do for everybody in the entire world that's not only beneficial to my students. So the website and the readings for this class are open to everyone. The link for my website is 484 dot cs dot uic dot edu you can go take a look at it you can follow along have a great time people that aren't enrolled in the class won't have access to personalized feedback and assistance you won't be able to use our internal auto graders and you won't be able to use our in-class assessments and our in-class discussions i'll try to respond to youtube comments and questions if possible but only if i've really got the time for it because my main focus when I'm making these is on my UIC students, but all the feedback I get from YouTube, I really appreciate and I use it to make the rest of my videos better. So this is all to say that if I do my job and you do your job, you're gonna learn the stuff you wanna learn. You're gonna get the grade you want. I push really hard, but I do curve kind of hard and I do see that a lot of people are getting the grade that they want if they engage the way that you know I ask them to, I want them to. And hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, knock on wood, we're gonna have fun along the way because the web is a fun place to be. I think that this class is a fun place to be and I'm looking forward to working with you throughout the rest of the semester. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.